I will be giving you a brief overview of all the specimens that we have in the female genital system in our museum. So we have three specimens of mature cystic teratoma as you can see. This is the second one and this is the third one. All of them have a lining which is composed of stratified squamous epithelium and appendages of the skin as you can see here is also visible. Then we have simple serous cyst of the ovary. It is a unilocular cyst and you have a serous wall lining the cyst. These two are multiloculated cysts but they are also serous cysts of the ovary. We have another serous cyst which is much bigger. It's cut open and displayed. This is also serous cyst of the ovary. We have this one is a hemorrhagic cyst. The hemorrhage could have been caused because of twisting of the pedicle of the ovary. So you can see that the wall is hemorrhagic and dark in color. Then we move on to another huge specimen of cyst in the ovary. When you look carefully, you can see it is a multiloculated cyst and the walls are gelatinous. It was filled with mucin when it was removed from the body. The next specimen which I would like to show you is the mucinous cyst adenocarcinoma. You can see that there are multiple solid areas in addition to the gelatinous walls of the multiloculated cyst that you can see. Here is another example of mucinous cyst adenocarcinoma. Again, you have a lot of solid areas in there, which gives you evidence that it is malignant. So we will move on to the second row, where we will start with another tumor of the ovary. On one side, you can see that it is multi-lobulated and smooth. The cut surface is again smooth. This is the counterpart of seminoma in the testis. So the diagnosis is dysgerminoma, dysgerminoma of the ovary. Next one is Krukenberg's tumor. It is a secondary deficit from a gastrointestinal mucinous adenocarcinoma. This is an example of trans spread of tumors. Above this, the row above, we have hydrosalpings of the fallopian tube. If you look carefully, you can see that the, the, the end of the tube which was attached to the fundus is ligated and you can see that the fimbrial end is also clearly visible. It is translucent, it's filled with um, serous fluid and it's called hydrosalpings. This is another specimen of hydrosalpings, but the fimbrial end is not very clear here. Now we move on to the uterus. We find this is one specimen of fibroid uterus. You find multiple fibroids. You find intramural fibroid. You find some of them which are projecting towards the outside, they're called subserous, and some of them which are projecting into the lumen, which is called submucose. And in the cervix you can find some nebotian cysts as well. This is yet another specimen showing multiple fibro fibroids of the uterus and it shows the same findings as we described before. This is a sub ones and the sub ones and there are more intramural ones as well. This one is showing sub fibroid, a huge sub fibroid in the uterus and you can see that the endometrial cavity is distorted and the whirly appearance is also visible. Coming to another tumor in the uterus, you find that the whole uterus is enlarged because of excessive proliferation of the endometrium 
which is proliferated into the endometrium and infiltrated making the uterus much bigger and a portion you can see has been removed for examination by the pathologist. This is a case of endometrial carcinoma. This one shows a fallopian tube which was a seat of ectopic pregnancy. It has ruptured and if you turn around you can find the products of conception are seen to be protruding from the ruptured part. This is showing choriocarcinoma of the uterus. It's a hemorrhagic mass infiltrating the myometrium and reaching the serocell surface. This is the classical appearance of vesicular mole which denotes hydropic regeneration of the chorionic villi. If you look carefully, you can find that these villi or these vesicles are composed of small grape-like clusters and they are filled with clear fluid. We have another jar showing the same and another jar showing the same here. As we move on, we find congenital anomalies. We have a fetus here where the anterior abdominal wall failed to develop. So the abdominal contents are exposed to the peritoneum. And there is another fetus where the vault of the skull has not developed and there is spina bifida. This is another fetus where there is anencephaly, spina bifida, cleft lip and cleft palate.